Alright, this video is going to show you how to do synthetic substitution, which you maybe already know. Um, and what we want to do is something like this. We'll find uh, f of 3 for f of x equals 5x cubed plus 3x squared minus 2x and plus 4. So what's important is that every power of x is accounted for right now. So we have cubed squared first and to the 0 because um, we're going to need that when we set it up. So the first thing we do is we write 3, and I always say you put it in a box, but you're not really putting it in a box. Uh, just draw that little guy right there. Um, and now we take the coefficients, so uh, 5, and then positive 3, and then a negative 2, and then a positive 4, and then we put a line. Um, so the process is the same every time, so I'm really just going to demonstrate it. Uh, first thing we do is drop down this 5. Now what I'm going to do is take... Uh, 3 and 5 and multiply those to get 15 and then I add down so add down I get 18 I multiply 3 and 18 um, and that's going to give me 54 I'm going to add down to get 52 then I'll multiply 3 and 52 and I get 156 so I'm going to add down to get 160 I'm going to put that in a box that's actually f of 3 so uh, doing all that work I found that f of 3 is 160 alright so let's take a look at another example at the end of this, I'm going to show you how to kind of generally do it, or why it kind of works. Um, so here I have, I want to find f of negative 4 for f of x equals 3x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus 4. I definitely don't want to uh, just substitute in here. Uh, and you'll see that this is actually, it's a little bit easier. Actually, this one's not so bad if you just substitute in, but, you know, principle's the same. So I'm going to take the negative 4 and put it in the box. And now I have a 3 that goes with x to the 4th. I have a 0 that goes with x cubed a negative 2 that goes with x squared, a 0 that goes with x, and a 4 that goes with um, x to the 0. I'm going to draw that line. Now I drop down the 3, multiply negative 4 and 3 to get negative 12, add down, multiply to get 48, add down to get 46. I should point out, I don't actually draw these little um, down arrows. Actually, I don't draw any of these arrows. I'm just drawing them to help you kind of understand what's happening. Uh, multiply here get negative 184, I'm going to add down, get negative 184, um, and then multiply there to get 736, add down, 740, so that's what I was looking for, so f of negative 4 is 740. Alright, so that's the method, it's really, really fast, um, I recommend it, especially when the numbers get kind of big, when you have to raise them to higher, uh, greater and greater powers, uh, this method is really useful. So here's uh, the general idea. So say I want to find f of r for um, f of x equals, so a generic quadratic, so ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's see what would happen if I did that. So r goes in the box, and then I have a, b, and c. Had to space them out a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop down the a. I'm going to multiply r and a to get um, a times r. Now I'm going to add down, so that gives me a r plus b. Now I'm going to multiply that by r to give me a r squared plus b r, and then add down and I end up with ar squared plus br plus c. And if you look at the original function, that's exactly what I would have gotten if I had plugged in um, r from the, from the very beginning. Um, so that's kind of how it works. Um, I think that illustrates enough, at least. So in this case, we'd see that f of r is this. Um, anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.